Want to know how to make these fluffy pancakes? Stay tuned. All right, y'all. This is the remixed version of pancakes. Let me show you how to make it look like restaurant style quality. Okay, you want to get your Aunt Jemima? Go ahead and leave a comment at the bottom if you miss seeing Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben on these products, y'all. I miss them. Bring them back. Okay, so we just doing uh, about a quarter cup of pancake mixture. And this is what's going to make it the difference right here. This is um, vinegar. You want to do about a cap size and pour it in. And then get you some coffee cream or French vanilla. Okay, it's going to give it that taste. If you don't have regular vanilla, you can add this. Okay, and then you're going to have you some heavy cream and mix it in there. If it's too loose, you just want to add it a little more pancake mix and then stir it till it's about a nice fluffy medium consistency thick okay see how fluffy that is but it's not loose it's not too thick but it's like a light fluffiness okay and then you're going to do like a medium low heat and let your pot heat up okay as your pot is heating up the, the mixture is resting and it's just going to get more fluffy okay look at how fluffy it, it it got since you let it rest and that's just the baking soda the vinegar and the cream are mixing together in, in a chemical reaction, you know. And this secret ingredient I learned from my aunt. Shout out at, to Tony Hope Live, okay? She the one that taught me that. Anyways, you're going to go ahead and add your pancake mix to the pan. It's nice and hot and you want to do about a teaspoon measure into the pan making small pancakes for yourself, for company, for your kids, okay? And it makes it look like it's a lot on a plate, but it's not really. This is equal to just one regular size pancake. So this is kind of how another trick you can spread out meals between kids. Because they don't eat a lot, right? So young kids I'm talking about. So after about two minutes, or if you look at the bottom of the pancake and you see the edges look very dull. Um, not a lot of sheen to it. That's when you know it's time to flip. So I flip my pancake and then I let it cook for another almost minute and a half. Okay, to two minutes. But look at the rise on the cake and look at the the how golden brown it is, right? It looks so delicious. Look at the thickness of this cake and it's going to taste even better. And I did not have to add egg or none of that. I just added the creamer and the heavy cream and it came out nice and fluffy. So I'm just going to cook one egg for myself because I'm making an omelet and I found out that one egg is easier to control and roll. And I'm just doing a cheese omelet today. You can cut up vegetables and add it if you want, but make sure you mint some really small. And I'm just putting in some parsley, some salt, and some gr black ground pepper in there. And I'm going to mix that up and get my pan ready. So it's nice and hot, and I'm going to add me some butter to the pan. Okay, making sure my omelet don't stick. I don't want it to stick when I'm trying to flip it over. So once my butter is melted, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just add my egg. And it's going to cook really quick, so y'all pay attention to the edges of the egg. You spread it around, see how fast it's cooking. Once the edges are almost done, you want to go ahead and start to flip. All right, y'all, my omelet is flipped and I'm going to add the cheese. But look at what I'm talking about. It's so easy to fold over. And I'm just making small folds until I get it a nice all the way folded over and out. And now I got my bacon here. I cooked it off camera. 400 degrees for about 12 minutes in the oven and I'm just rinsing some fruit to go along with my breakfast you guys It's gonna be delicious We interrupt this program to bring you a special report What's up everybody welcome to the gospel report I told you on this channel you're gonna get the gospel truth okay we're gonna start out in prayer dear Lord God we thank you for this opportunity we pray Lord God that you would open up our heart and allow your truth to penetrate our heart and stir up our spirit for good works and to draw those who don't believe that perhaps it will pro produce a response of repentance Lord true repentance and true believing faith in your only begotten son amen we are going to try to be as quick and efficient as possible i don't like the videos to be too long but i want you to get this truth all right we starting from matthew chapter 4, 4 verse 4 and this is just a heading going into the set of scriptures that's going to be like the main point right so we going in and we saying here this is when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. And one of the things that happened was Satan was tempting him with a loaf of bread because he had been fasting 
for 40 days. And we know when you fast, like you are weak, you are hungry, you are ready to eat. Or anytime you, you're not able to eat and you miss a meal, it's, it's not a good feeling to be hungry, you know. But anyway, it says here in verse, verse 4, but Jesus told him, no, no to this bread, no to what you're trying to do. The scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Why is Jesus saying the scriptures say? Because back in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3, it said here that God humbled the Israelites when they were in the wilderness. Okay, he humbled them, causing them to hunger. Why? And then feeding them with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And it's, I want you to focus on this word, but, but. OK, but is considered to be a coordinating conjunction used to connect ideas that contrast. OK. OK, not just the word, not just the bread, I mean, but the word of God, not just the bread, but instruction. OK, not just the bread, but what I'm what is what else with the bread? OK. And so Jesus not want you to God doesn't want you to just be physically filled and satisfied he wants you to be spiritually filled and satisfied and eat of this new bread and this is what we're going to talk about in john chapter 6 jesus being a bread of life and what this really means past being past the physical body but into the spiritual man okay so let's go back and this is a great point and just read all of chapter 6 is really good but i just want to go through the chapter and skip around and just extract certain points here okay so we're going to start at verse 26, and this is after Jesus fed the 5,000, right? And so now he got people following him. He's in Capernaum now, and he got people following him, right, because they're getting fed, physically getting fed, okay, despite the fact that he's Jesus. But, you know, their minds haven't been open, you know, to the truth, or perhaps that it has. Let's look. We're going to read, and I'm going to point that out, okay? All right, so chapter 26 He's got these people following him. He's doing miracles, signs, and wonders. And then Jesus, this is what Jesus says to the crowd that follows him to Capernaum. He says, I tell you the truth. I'm being real, okay? Jesus is being real. He's going to tell them the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. He called them out, right? Not because you understood the miraculous signs, okay? Not, not because you understood what I just did miraculously through the power of God, but don't be so concerned about the perishable things like food, like clothes, like fill in the blank. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. Only Jesus can give eternal life. For God the Father has given me the seal of approval. The Lord God has allowed him to come into the world and do these things. They replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? And Jesus told him, told them, this is the only work God wants you to do, to believe in the one he has sent. And that is Jesus Christ. If you believe, then you will be saved. You will be doing the work of God, the, the work that God wanted you to do. And they answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe you. What can you do? I thought that was funny considering that Jesus had just fed 5,000 people. But here we go. After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. So remember in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, you know, um, the backstory is Exodus 16, if you want to read that. But Jesus had gave them, uh, God allowed Moses to show them, you know, allow manna to fall. God made manna fall from heaven, but they're thinking that it was Moses. But Jesus corrected them on this, okay? Um, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he's offering you the true bread from heaven. Okay, um, he's offering the bread that they can be satisfied with all the way down to their soul. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said, sir, they said, give us this bread every day. And Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. You remember in the last, uh, in John 4, about that Samaritan woman who said, Lord, give me this water that I may not thirst. You remember that one? Okay, so we know that God is able to quench 
through and through beyond the physical down to the soul. It says, but you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. However, those the father has given me will come to me and I will never reject them. Okay, I'm just going to scroll down. Okay. All right. Please go back and reread. This is a whole chapter six. It's very good. You guys go back and read it for yourself. But I'm going to drop down to chapter 41. And I want to make a point here because you remember we talked about how the gospel can provoke. It's, it's, the word of God is stronger than any two-edged sword, piercing the heart of men, uh, piercing their heart, exposing their true desires of the heart, exposing their true intent of the mind. And so the gospel can provoke in two ways. Either you will pre be provoked to produce a heart of true repentance and true saving faith, or you're going to be provoked to, to not believe, to, unbel to, to be in disagreement against the word of God, to be unbelieving. And that's an example that you see in Acts chapter 7 when they stoned Stephen after Stephen ran down the whole gospel. <laughs> and unfortunately, their hearts was cut, but it revealed that they did not want to believe the truth. OK, so in this verse 41, it says, then the people began to murmur in disagreement because of what he had said. I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. How can he say I come down from heaven? How can they say that? But Jesus said, stop complaining about what I said, for no one can come to me unless the father who draws, who sent me draws them to me. And, the la and at the last day, I will raise them up. OK, it's the Lord God who draws and, and the word of God that helps a person comes to know him. OK. It says here in verse 47, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died, okay? They ate a, a physical, they were satisfied physically, but the only one who can satisfy physically and spiritually is the Lord God, is Jesus Christ. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am that living bread that came down from heaven, and anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread which I will offer, so the world may live, is my flesh. Okay? This is the word of God. This is the, the gospel, you guys. If you eat of this bread, you will never die. You will live. And I just want to point out something. Um, this word right here, bread, if you go back and do like a word study in the Greek, it's very interesting. This living word bread is called artos, okay? Artos, the Greek word for bread, is called artos. But it derives from a verb, which is called eio. Let me go back. So the Greek word is called artos. Artos is the Greek word is leaven bread or leaven loaf or bread and so it's derived from a verb called a e ro a e ro okay and what does this verb what does this verb mean what does it do what's the point of this verb well let's look at it to raise up elevate lift up to take upon oneself and carry what has been raised to bear okay is this starting to sound familiar you guys to move from place to move from its place, to take off what was attached to it, to remove, okay, to remove, okay? Did Jesus not, was raised up on the third day? Did he not bear our sins and take away the penalty of our sins and remove the penalty of our sins, okay? Violently, it says to take from among the living, either by natural death or by violence. And we know that Jesus had a violent crucifixion. I believe words cannot describe, movies cannot do it justice. Probably at that time, what they seen, I, I just can't imagine. But Jesus had a violent death, okay? And he died on the cross. He buried our sins, and he was raised up on the third day, you guys. This is the Greek word for bread, and this is what that bread did. This bread, his flesh, died on the cross for our sins and was raised up on the third day. Okay, and anyone who eats of this bread, anyone who receives this bread, anyone who puts their faith in this bread, the living bread, Jesus Christ, will be saved. This is the gospel of Jesus. Okay, man cannot live on bread alone, but also by the word of God. 
in conjunction with you need the bread. We need bread to eat. The Lord know we need to eat physically, but how much more so spiritually, you guys? How much more so spiritually? Because day by day, our physical bodies is perishing. But every day, if we are in the Lord Jesus Christ and we delight in his truth, our spirit man is being renewed day by day. And so it's so important to just study for yourself the, the word of God and share the gospel of Jesus Christ so that other people may have this bread too. Okay, we're not hoarders, y'all. We want to get this bread and we want to share with other people the bread of life as well so that they too may be saved and be raised up in the last day. Okay, I just want to emphasize, you know, share the gospel, read the word for yourself so that you can be comfortable with sharing the gospel because you can't share anything that you're not comfortable with or don't know or are not assured with. So the word of God gives you that power. It gives you that authority to go forth and speak the truth and that you may also not be led astray by those who come as, as you know, people that may seem righteous, but on the inside, they ravenous wolves and they take the word and they distort it to their own personal gain like the devil did, distorting the word of God and, and using it for his personal gain. But that's why it's important for us to learn the word of God for ourselves so that when we hear something that don't sound right, we come back to the word of God. And we compare it and learn for ourselves that, you know, if they were speaking an error, it's an error. And we recognize that. Because remember we said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it separates what's true and what's, what's a lie, what's right and what's wrong. And so it's important to get into the scriptures, read it for yourself. And it's important to share the gospel. And I just encourage you to stay and I pray that you were able to re receive and that we all may grow together. And that those who don't know will be led to understand Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, if they put their trust and their faith in him, the Lord knowing he will draw you near to come to understand if you are willing. We just give the Lord the glory this day and you guys have a wonderful day. God bless. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. All right, you guys, I'm back. I'm just cutting me up some fruit that y'all saw me rinse earlier. These are strawberries. Now, they look a little different because I live here in Japan, and that's just how the species of strawberry look, okay? And I got me some blueberries here. And this is the finished product right here, you guys. I'm just showing you this can feed one adult or two small toddlers. You just chop the omelet down the middle and share the bacon. And this is a meal, okay? And then I just want to show you guys how you can elevate a humble box of Aunt Jemima pancake mix i hope you guys enjoy and try out the recipe thank you so much for watching and y'all have a blessed day